If anybody is still suffering under the delusion that antinatalism is a rational position, I think you need to go and check out how I sent one of the cult members packing the other day. Oh, I didn't so much send them packing as they decided to go home and take away the ball. The thing is that when that happened, their parting shot to me was, well, why should I waste my time with somebody who simply doesn't care? Good question. Why should you waste your time with somebody who doesn't care? What, of course, you cannot continue to claim in that situation is that your position is therefore rational. Because it is obviously not a rational decision that led you to abandon this dialogue. What led you to abandon the dialogue was anger and frustration. Which is understandable, because when I am discussing certain aspects of antinatalism, I can come across as extremely callous and uncaring. And of course, an ideology that claims to be built on empathy, for example, will find that incredibly hard to stomach. But here is the problem. They don't just claim to be based on empathy and caring. They claim that their position is rational. And even if we accept the reality of the situation, that any value judgment is subjective to some extent at least, and that insofar as, as uh, rationality even applies to it, and it does, the way it should be applied is in service of value judgments, in service of a value judgments value system. If you do that, rationality can be applied correctly. But then we need to look at the underlying principles, the rational arguments or the quasi-rational arguments that are presented in the service of antinatalism. And if we then find them wanting, the only valid thing left to do is to ditch them and remove them from the construct that is antinatalism. And this is a problem for the antinatalists because two of, the, of their most fundamental cornerstones are the imposition argument and the risk equation argument. And both of them are fallacious. The imposition argument doesn't work because you cannot impose anything on something that doesn't exist. And if harm and suffering are inherent in existence, then there is no imposing once it exists, either because it is already inherent within existence. Nobody, clearly nobody, is imposing anything on anybody. Similarly, the risk equation argument doesn't work because it is very clear, straight up, that no antinatalist alive is using this rationale in regard to their own existence. You only need to look at my previous video to see that if you switch off your emotions completely and you look at this from a purely rational perspective, you accept, accept the premise that suffering and harm are unacceptable and you then look logically at your own existence, then the only valid thing to do with your own existence is to terminate it immediately. And every antinatalist who doesn't do that is by definition at the very least a hypocrite. Now, the problem of course is that if you hear me say this, the only conclusion that you can take from that, or that seems to be a logical conclusion or a, a reasonable conclusion from this, is that I don't care. That I am utterly uncaring, unempathetic with suffering, and that I don't care whether you live or die. That is not necessarily the case, but for the sake of argument, let's assume that it is the case. Let's assume that I really do not care, that I couldn't care whether you lived or died or suffered or didn't suffer or whatever else. Does that matter? Does that have any 
bearing on how valid my rejections of the imposition argument and the harm equation are? The risk equation, sorry? No. It doesn't. That's the problem. It doesn't. I could be an utter bastard here. I could be an utter, uncaring, psychopathic prick presenting this argument to you. And still, you would have to accept its logical conclusion and you still need to reject the imposition argument and you still need to reject the risk equation argument as a basis for antenatalism. That is tough. That is very tough for an antenatalist to swallow. That is very tough for anybody to swallow. Because this leaves open the possibility that even if we accept the antenatalist concern with harm and suffering in reality, we may have to come to the conclusion, possibly, that there's simply nothing we can do about it. We can, of course, once we are in existence, once we're, de once we're dealing with an existing sentient being that is suffering, we can address its suffering, we can ameliorate it, we can treat it, we can sometimes even eliminate it, we can do our best, definitely. And, uh, and if you care, then I suggest that that's what you will be doing. When you come across anything that is suffering, you will do your best to try and make things better for it. That's what empathy leads you to do. But maybe, ultimately, we cannot completely eliminate it. And that is hard to swallow. That is very hard to swallow. It might even lead you to conclude, if you are sufficiently... Um, fixated on suffering and pain and harm and so on, that might even lead you to conclude that existence is therefore intolerable. And even then, even if that is your conclusion, it still isn't logically valid to conclude that non-existence is therefore preferable. Non-existence isn't anything, including preferable or worse or better or anything else compared to existence. Non-existence literally, logically, rationally is actually not an alternative to existence. There is no alternative to existence. If you exist, you exist and that's the end of it. There is no alternative to your existence. This also applies to hypothetical future beings. There is no alternative to their existence. Within the, hypothetic, in, within the hypothetical in which you posit their existence, they exist. And once that is the case, once that context has been established, there is no alternative. This is not a question of not caring. This is not a question of not giving a damn. This is a question of taking reality for what it is. And there is no way out of that. You have to accept reality for what it is. Doesn't mean that reality is hunky-dory and everything's grand. And that you shouldn't do your best to address the problems that do arise within reality. That was never said by anybody. But it does mean that you need to accept that reality is what it is. Is what you find it as. After that, do your best. Do what you can to make reality better. Even if it is only an improvement from utter rock bottom to desperation. That's an improvement, and that's something you can validly try to aim for. But antinatalism, if it is based on logical abortions such as the imposition argument and risk equations, 
is a dud. It's a damp squib. It's going nowhere. And I don't care how many professional philosophers are behind this idea. If they are behind this idea, they are idiots too. And that's the way the cookie crumbles.